Where did the story of Jesus start? It started 4100 years before Jesus. It started with the story of Isis and who became pregnant by an immaculate conception, gave birth once again. Success is a must. Work for your last name, not your first name. You know what? The, let me tell you. You know what separate the slave from freedom? Yeah. Courage. The courage to offend somebody. Where did the story of Jesus start? It started 4,100 years before Jesus. It started with the story of Isis and who became pregnant by an immaculate conception gave birth to her son Horus by a virgin birth. If you go to Egypt today, and by the way, Egypt is in Africa the last time I looked at it on June and January the 9th, <laughs> unless it took a 747 and flew away. <laughs> but if you should go to Egypt at a place called Abydos, there is a temple there, still there, partially in ruins. The temple of the Pharaoh Seti One, S E T I One, and there you will see not only in the hieroglyphic writing that the ancient Africans wrote, but you will also see the picture form the Africans painted that drew the entire story of the Immaculate Conception and the Virgin Birth story. That temple was completed by by Seti One's son Ramesses II. Ramesses II took over in 1298 before the Christian era, B.C., after the death of his father, Seti I. You will see at another place, at a temple for the god Horus, and that's at a place called Edfu. And you see the entire story of the crucified Savior there, on the walls and in the paintings and the ceilings and so forth. So what I'm saying to you, everything I'm going to say to you today, not only can you read them in books, but you can go to Egypt, to Ethiopia, to Nubia, and see in the ancient temples just what's there. And the question is, don't the Europeans, don't the whites know this? The vast majority do not know. But there are those in their universities and their high places, including Rome, who knows everything of what I'm speaking about today. But they have to suppress their own whites, much less those that they have enslaved. You don't have to take a trip to Egypt to see what I'm telling. Just take one dollar out of your pocket. I did not interfere with your dollar bill. Take it out. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to ask you for it. <laughs> this is not the type of church that will ask you for it just because you got one. But if you look on the green side of your American dollar bill, you see the story I've just been speaking about. The question is, how did it get there? You see the ever seen eye of Horus, otherwise known as the Ujet, U-D-J-E-T. And then you see around it the symbol of Amin Ra. You say at the end of each prayer, Amen. And somebody told you some lie that it means so be it. It never meant so be it and it still doesn't mean so be it. Amen was the god of the north in Egypt. Ra, symbolized by the sun, was the god in the south. And when Egypt unified herself, they combined the god of the north and the god of the south into the one and thus Amen Ra. A-M-E-N hyphen R-A. And the house of fire or pyramid, the Greek word P-Y-R-M-I-D, two words. Fire meaning fire or house and mid meaning the house. It is in this context then that the early people in Africa under the leadership of two Africans, one called Pantheus, P-A-N-T-A-E-U-S, and the other one called Boethius, B-O-E-T-I-U-S. Some 1983 years ago, having fell out with another branch of their own, decided to then reintroduce the concept of the Immaculate Conception, the Virgin Birth, the Murder and Resurrection, 
of uh, Os- uh, the Godhead, which late Os- um, Horus, which later became Jesus, and so forth. But have anyone ever told you what we're speaking about is Christianity before Jesus? There's sixteen crucified saviors. Sixteen. Jesus being the sixteenth. The first being Horus along the Nile in the land from whence your ancestors came. When the Africans along the Nile there started to deal with the concept of deity, God, there was no Greece yet and there was no Adam and no Eve. Because Adam and Eve is a concept, an allegory that came from the Hebrews, otherwise called Jews. The first of the Hebrews, Abraham, otherwise originally called Abram, A-B-R-M. But, as I stated before, Abraham or Abram was not born, born, until 1675 before the Christian era or B.C. You cannot have an Adam and Eve before you have Abraham. Why? The Jews are the ones that introduced the concept of an Adam and Eve. You don't have any book older than your Bible, your Judeo-Christian Bible, whatever version, with the book of Genesis. No other people in the world ever mentioned. And the first Jew is Abraham. You don't have a single... His mama wasn't a Jew. His daddy wasn't a Jew. They said Abraham was the first of the Jews. Your own Bible says it. So then, anything about the beginning of the world must be something he thought of. He had no concept of it. In 1675, the Africans along the Nile were already in their 13th dynastic period. 13th dynasty. I'm not talking about the pre-dynastic period. Are we to say that the Africans here had no concept of religion before Abraham was born? When Abraham was born here, in the city of Ur in Chaldea, Ur in Chaldea, this Chaldea was already a colony of these Africans. These Africans calling themselves Elamites. E-L-A-M-I-T-E-S. So that even Abraham was born at a time when the African was controlling the state where he was born. The book of Genesis isn't written when Abraham is born. It isn't written until 700 BC at the Sanhedrin when Jewish scribes decided and they did not even write the book of Genesis as the first book. They wrote the book of Exodus as the first book. But it looks silly to say that people are running from a place and they're not born yet. So at the council of at the Council of Jamia, at the Council of Jamia, they change Exodus and replace it with Genesis, the same thing they did with Luke and Matthew. Luke was the first book in the Christian Bible, but it looks silly talking about to a woman a child would be born in the first book and in the second book to a virgin a child would be born. So they have to, have to switch these two to. They've been switching all over the place. But it's not been new. But what was the switching? The switching was to remove a certain people from here. A people called Africans. Your people and mine. And it came about in the year 325 AD. When I know a Roman emperor, Rome, right here, by the name of Constantine, you see, decided that Rome, which was warring, Rome, which had been scourging the earth, Rome, which had been raping anything female, Ro- Rome, which had produced nothing but a scavenger nation that would go and take anything they could at the case of murder, was able to convince the early Christians, by the way, they had not taken on the name Christian until 212 at the Council of Antioch. Antioch is the first time people start calling themselves Christians. Jesus supposed to have been dead 212 years before the first Christians. Jesus himself was never a Christian. Because you can't be a follower of yourself. Since this is the first day of the birth of Abraham, the first Jew, 
And out of Judaism came Christianity, out of Christianity came Islam. That's why I put that. You're talking about times of days. They tell you that the world is only 6,000 years old. If the world is only 6,000 years old, we subtract. We have to take 6,000 with 1,800, add that, subtract it from this to give us at what time the world began. No, no we're 1980, I'm sorry, 1983, right? Seven, one, uh, zero, one from five, four. So you're telling me that the world, that Jesus, that the world started 4,117 years before the birth of Jesus the Christ? If that is so, then the, uh, the Egyptian Book of the Dead and the Papyrus of Annie preceded this by 3,000 years. The Africans along the Nile give to the world the first known calendar and you can't have a calendar without astronomy. It is because of astronomy, the movement of the stars, the planets, the suns and so forth and the recording of them, you develop astronomy and the Africans in 10,000 B.C. In this state, Adam should really feel bad behind that. 10,000 B.C. More than 6,000 years before Adam at least, the Africans produced what is known as the stellar calendar, S-T-E-L-L-A-R, a calendar based upon the, the stars and so forth. And then we find that calendar in 4100 B.C. as the solar calendar, speaking you understand that. We have to then realize that in order for you to understand the development of the religion called Christianity, you must understand the source. First, we must know where Christianity started. The records show, whether you are a Protestant, a Catholic, or what, that Christianity started here, at a place called Alexandria, with Pantheus and Boethius. That's in Africa, by the way. And that from there, it spread out. 1983 years ago, but this religion went across here. It went from Egypt to Lebos, now called Libya, from Lebos to Numidia, no, Numidia is now called uh, Mar Mar um, uh, Tunisia, then it went to Carthage, later called Carthage, today called Morocco, that's how it, then it traveled down the Nile and went here, right here at the island of Phile, P-H-P-H-A-L-A-E, Phile, is where they established the first monastery, the first Christian monastery right here. And this religion existed 134 years before it went this way. But it came into this land as the worship of what is called the Herculaneum worship of Isis. Because originally it was the worship of an African woman. It will seem strange, it should seem to you, that the first worship that man worshipped was not a man, not a god, but a goddess. The goddess Hathor. H-A-T-H-O-R. H-A-T-H-O-R. Hathor. Symbolized as a cow with a sun disc between her horn, which the Jews adopted and called the golden calf. <coughs> the present Hindus adopted it and call it the sacred cow. When you go to Egypt right here and the western bank of the Nile, there is a temple at a place called Dendera, D-E-N-D-E-R-A-H, built in honor of goddess Hathor and you will see 3,500 faces at each of the columns and our places of this African woman. And that's why they will have you go to Mecca and to Palestine, and to, I mean, Jerusalem, and to, to uh, Bethlehem, but never to Egypt, never to Ethiopia, never to, 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 to um, Nubia, to see the ancient tombs dug into the walls. I mean, when I say tomb, this building is one less than a quarter the size of the average tomb. I'm not talking about an eight by five thing, where all the records are there. When you talk about this, the source of this, having come to, um, and uh, Judaism, but where did Judaism get its belief source? The most ancient, the most ancient writing about the word heaven, the ancient Egyptian 
The ancient Egyptian Africans call it Amenta. The opposite of that they call Abydos. In the Heretic writing. Mm. But when this was thousands of years, there were no Adam and Eve story yet, there was no Jew yet, there was of course no Greece yet. We don't have Greece. Doesn't come in history until 833 BC when Homer wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey. And Homer said that even the gods of Greece, the gods of Europe, the two first gods, Zeus and Apollo, came from Ethiopia. Don't forget to subscribe for videos. Success is a must.